many roads must a man walk down? So Shakespeare was taking English history, British history, using source material such as Holinshed's Chronicles, which were diaries, articles, various historical accounts, turning that into, into plays. And then out the other side came great plays, Henry V, King Lear, Richard II, Richard III. Some were different historical fictional accounts, but just like as a process for creating art. Then should Solomon, king of Israel, assume his throne and raise his pen. The pen is mightier than the sword, and Solomon writes to the last man. But pardon, dear guests, one and all, this is not Shakespeare, but Bible. I bash it not, but speak it true. Jerusalem, today I act for you. I mean, it's England, it's like, just as Italy uses the language of Dante and California uses the language of Starbucks, you know, England uses the language of Shakespeare. Um, I mean, I'm interested in the paradigms. So Shakespeare, excuse me, the plays are based on an Aristotelian five-act structure. It's basically, it's the beginning, middle and end with a catharsis, with a twist, and there are, these, there are these dramatic components. There's this kind of clear journey of kings, and this idea of a divine right of kings, that it's, it's inspired by God, that God gives them their right. We have this too in Sefer Shmuel and Sefer Malachim, with King Saul, King David, King Solomon. I mean, their, their right to rule basically comes from God. So there you've got a point of commonality. That's where the conversation, where it matches. You've also got an area where it completely goes in different directions in that we don't have a tragic structure, like we don't have clear tragedy. King David's story, it's awful what happens, but he doesn't die at the end. It's not like the, you know, the stake through the heart. Saul dies, but it's kind of very, very messy, and his, Saul's death is, is completely comic. He tries to commit suicide. He doesn't manage to commit suicide because he can't quite finish himself off. So he gets an Amalekite messenger to finish it. And then the Amalekite messenger turns up at, with King David and says, hey, I've got King Saul head in a box. And rather than being you know, promoted or something, King David then kills the Amalekite messenger. Like it's just, I don't know what it is, but it's not, it's not neat. And like as Jews, we don't have like these kind of very neat stories. You know, the queen, the greatest queen, but Sheva is someone else's wife. And, uh, and so there's, there's, there's amazing, it's amazing questions. What does it mean to be a leader? What does it mean to rule? What does it mean to have inconsistencies? And this is where, I say, this is where I think the Jewish approach is, is unique and it's powerful. <sighs> the Bible's just not relevant today. Besides, I only like the bits that dad wrote. The Bible needs a love song. I will write it. I will write a song that is better than all other songs. It will be a song about passion. Oh, give me the kiss of your lips. The taste is sweeter than wine. Your ointment yields a charming perfume. Your name like oil so fine. Lusty, draw me after you. Come, let us run to the king's bedchamber. There we'll have fun. Let us rejoice and delight in your love, like the colour of rainbows for him up above. So based on the theory that Solomon wrote Shea Hashirim in the early part of his life, Mishlei, the Proverbs in the middle part of his life, and Gohel at the end of his life, we thought, all right, so let's, let's look at this. Let's look at his journey through these different parts. And then on top of that, well, he also built the temple by at Rishon, the first temple, that's a big thing. On top of that, we're told he was the wisest person that ever lived. On top of that, we're told he had 700 wives, and in addition to that, 300 plug shot, so concubines, a halakhically approved girlfriend, lover. So it's a thousand women, three books of the Bible, one temple, wisest person ever to have lived, and yet he messed everything up to such a degree that he left the country in massive debt. They basically hated him. The kingdom fell apart and it split into two, northern and southern Israel, and his son was only allowed one small portion of the temple, one small portion of the kingdom. That is what you call the source material for a play.
creating a new, a new uh, image or a new concept. It's a need I have. It's a, an obsession. Language of icons are very powerful, uh, immediate, strong and uh, aggressive. I wanted to study what is considered the hardest language in the world and a growing superpower in a country that everybody says is impossible to understand. I think Chinese and Israelis actually have a lot of interesting similarities. China's ascendancy in um, world politics, it's going to shift the, the balance. China really is the biggest story for the rest of my life.